So you're launching an investigation into whether or not there's any big tech violations with antitrust. Tell me about the investigation. When will it get started? What are you going to be looking for? Uh, we announced the beginning of the investigation yesterday. This is a review broadly of the dominant technology platforms uh, in the digital marketplace to look at how they're operating, whether or not they are providing a, con you know, a context for a sufficient competition, whether they're engaged in anti-competitive behavior, whether they're engaged in behavior which is discouraging or eliminating competitors, uh, whether they're discouraging uh, innovation and entrepreneurship, whether they're having a proper regard for the privacy interests of their users, and uh, whether or not they uh, allow c users to really control their own data. So there are a number of really important issues, but this is an opportunity to use the investigative process which will involve depositions and hearings. Subpoenas? And witnesses, and if necessary, subpoenas, uh, document requests, uh, round tables, we'll bring in some of the best technologists in the country who have been doing a lot of thinking about what's the right response, what are the right answers. I think it's easy to identify the challenges and the big problems. It's harder to come up with the solutions. And so we want to be sure that we have the best data, the best thinking, the most accurate information as we develop solutions to you know, these No, I'm struck challenges. by this because so much of the rhetoric, break up big tech, and there's all of this different rhetoric on the right and the left, but if necessary, uh, Congressman, would you change the statutes to break up some of these big tech companies? I think there's no question that uh, one of the things we will look at very carefully is whether or not the existing antitrust statutes are sufficient to protect the kind of competition at issue here. Uh, it's important to remember those antitrust statutes were drafted principally during the railroad monopolies, which is a very different economy, <laughs> and it might be time to <laughs> update them and modernize them and think, are they working effectively in the 21st century? Uh, what's also exciting is this is a bipartisan investigation. There's Republican and Democratic support for doing this in a thoughtful, responsible way. There may not be agreement with every solution at the conclusion of it, but I think people recognize that it matters to constituents all across the country on both sides of the How line. do you think, just to, as you start this investigation, how do you think the, the laws might need to be revamped or changed? Well, I think, you know, one of the things that I'm interested in is looking at some of the examples in the European Union and the state of California where there are some easy competition-based solutions where you require some of the platforms to provide interoperability and portability so that there is an ability to say, if you don't like what this platform provides in terms of securing your data or the privacy protections or the way it's used, you have an opportunity to go to another platform. There can be competition. Right now, that really can't happen because you're sort of walled in to the garden of Facebook. You can't take your stuff with you and it's not interoperable with other platforms. So putting those requirements as an example might be an easy way to start with a competition-based solution that will uh, allow others to enter the market and compete with those existing platforms. That's just one idea. Do you have confidence in the DOJ and the FTC to bring about meaningful change? No. The, you don't? I do not. not. I mean, look, they, the, the DOJ hasn't brought a serious monopoly case for two decades. Uh, in fact, they've been... Either administration. That's yeah. right. They've filed a couple of amicus briefs in support of monopolies or duopolies. So I, I don't have a lot of confidence that they're going to take this seriously. I'm pleased that they're talking about it. But whether they did it or not, they do it with respect to enforcement of particular actions or transactions. What we're going to look at is a broader uh, consideration of these issues so that we can develop legislative responses that will impact, you know, kind of the digital marketplace broadly. So far, are the, are the big tech companies cooperating with you? Or well, it just started. Just I mean, started? we let them know that we're going to do this. I, look, I fully expect they will. I think you have some leaders like Tim Cook who have really been outspoken about the, the fact that this kind of scrutiny is valuable and important. So I think responsible le leaders, I, he I don't think has made a statement about it. But, but look, I think it's important that they be a pro, you know, be engaged in this in a meaningful way. Yeah. We want to hear their ideas. We want to understand their viewpoint. We want to certainly inform our thinking by, by some of their experiences, but they're not going to dictate whether we do this or not. We're doing this investigation. We're going to come up with answers, and I'm hopeful and, and confident that they'll be part of the discussion. Time frame? Like, how long do you think it'll... My expectation is we will conclude this process with a report, with a set of recognitions at the right. end of that, and we will do it in enough time to have legislation considered in this Congress. This Congress. And what do you say to, to shareholders or to folks who are investors? I mean, you know this, the headline risk, based off of the news of this within the last 24 hours, we've seen the FANG stocks dip. What, what's your message to shareholders or to folks who say, hey, wait, you know, big tech companies, they provide a lot of robust economic growth for, for Look, our Look, there's no question they do, and they provide a lot of value. We also need to understand the perils yeah. and some of the dangers and excesses here. And it's in the, in the long-term interest of these companies and their shareholders for us to address this issue in a serious way because the integrity and confidence that people have in these companies matters and people need to have confidence that their data is not being misused, that, that they're, not, uh, they're not being taken advantage of by favoring their own products, et cetera. And so 
Um, this is, it may not feel like it initially, but it's in the long-term interest of the companies as well as the consumers that we get this right. It will be healthier for them, better for consumers, and we want to make sure that we're making those judgments with the best data we can. Public and private hearings, public and private interviews? Will yes, we I mean, there's also a, a significant number of individuals who have already come forward that are interested in sharing information, but are very worried about economic retaliation. These are powerful companies with tremendous market power, and so we have to have part, uh, ability in this process to allow people to come forward in a confidential way and share some of the, their knowledge so we can use that information as well as we develop. The man in the middle, you're in the middle of the storm.